In the 1940s, various countries worked to develop a horrifying new weapon, nuclear bombs. During World War II, the United States and Great Britain worked together in what was called the Manhattan Project to develop the world's first atomic bomb. In 1945, the world got to see firsthand the destructive capabilities of these weapons when two were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. But while those were the only devices to be used directly on civilians, a great deal more testing had to be done. Following the 1940s, various countries created nuclear weapons far more powerful than what was used during World War II. In fact, the detonations that occurred in Hiroshima and Nagasaki don't even make it into the top five nuclear explosions in all of history. From the Tsar Bomba to Castle Yankee, these are the five largest and most powerful nuclear explosions of all time. On October 30th, 1961, the largest nuclear detonation went off, and to this day, no other country has topped it. The Soviet RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, more collectively known as the Tsar Bomba, went off in the Soviet Union. It was designed as an experimental verification of multi-stage thermonuclear weapon designs, as well as various calculation principles. The bomb was detonated above the Sukhoinos Cape of Severny Island, a little over nine miles from Mityushka Bay. While the detonation was planned in secret, United States intelligence agencies detected the blast. Based on bang meter results and additional data, it's estimated that the bomb produced roughly 58 megatons of TNT. That's almost 3,000 times the strength of the bomb used at Hiroshima. According to reports, the detonation was large enough to break windows located 560 miles away from the blast site, and the flash of light from the test was visible from up to 620 miles away. A bomb of this magnitude would be capable of creating a fireball 6.4 square miles in size. Any humans that were within 4,080 square miles of the Tsar Bomba's epicenter would have instantly suffered third-degree burns. But you don't have to take our word. Here is real test footage from the Tsar Bomba detonation. Luckily, the Tsar Bomba was never designed with the expectation to be used as a weapon. Instead, it was meant to demonstrate the nuclear power the Soviet Union wielded. It was built to exert psychological pressure on the United States. They originally planned to design an even larger version of Tsar Bomba that would have had a yield of around 100 megatons. The only problem is that the delivery aircraft would be unable to escape in time, so it was never actually built. Over the decades, the Soviet Union conducted numerous tests on its nuclear payload. One such test took place on December 24, 1962. It was designated as Test 219, and it took place over the Novaya Zemlya test range. The weapon in question was a thermonuclear fusion bomb that had a yield of roughly 24.2 megatons, making it the second largest detonation in history. At this strength, the bomb would be capable of incinerating everything within 3.58 square miles of the epicenter. Additionally, it would cause third-degree burns to anyone located within an area of 2,250 square miles. Unfortunately, no photos or videos exist of the explosion. Just when you think we were done with the Soviet Union, the country also takes the third place spot in a three-way tie. Between August 5th and September 27th, 1962, the USSR conducted a series of nuclear tests, which also took place over Novaya Zemlya. 
Three of these tests in particular, which were labeled as 147, 173, and 174, stand out as the third, fourth, and fifth largest detonations in history. Each blast produced roughly 20 megatons of energy. Any of these bombs would have been capable of incinerating everything within three square miles of the blast site. While these were the largest blasts performed during this time period, they were far from the only ones. In that time frame, a total of 78 nuclear tests were conducted. For example, Test 144 produced a yield of 2.4 kilotons. Again, no photos or videos exist of these specific tests. Believe it or not, the Soviet Union doesn't have a monopoly on massive nuclear detonations. Over the years, the United States continued to test high-yield thermonuclear weapons even after the attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The largest test ever done by the United States was referred to as Castle Bravo. Throughout the 1950s, the United States conducted a series of tests at Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. This particular bomb was detonated on March 1, 1954, and it's noteworthy for being the first lithium deuteride fueled thermonuclear weapon. Its yield was 15 megatons, which was actually a lot larger than the military thought it would be. Here is some video footage showing the size of the blast. It may have been the largest nuclear test ever done by the United States, but it also changed the way testing needed to be done in the future to reduce the impact on local populations. Just a few days after Castle Bravo, the United States would test another massive weapon. This was received the codename of Castle Yankee. Its test occurred on May 5, 1954, also in Bikini Atoll. It released the energy equivalent of 13.5 megatons, making it the second largest nuclear test to be done in US history. Castle Yankee was initially intended to be a weaponized version of the complex Ivy Mike device. Ivy Mike was a code name given to a test of a thermonuclear device which placed part of the explosive yield to come from nuclear fusion. When it was shown that Castle Bravo was a success, they proceeded with the Castle Yankee test. Again, calculations were off for this test. They had originally predicted the yield to be between 6 and 10 megatons, but of course, it reached 13.5. This was attributed to a large percentage of the yield being created by fast fission of the natural uranium tamper. In total, 6.5 megatons were from the fusion reaction, while an additional 7 came from fission. Here is video footage of the detonation taking place. Camera position, 50 miles at 10,000 feet. Size of picture, 14 by 18 miles. Photographed at half normal speed. It detonated on a barge moored in the middle of a crater that came from an earlier Castle Union test. Four days after the test took place, fallout from the blast reached Mexico City, which was 7,100 miles away. While there were technical difficulties with some of the bombs, government officials largely considered Operation Castle to be a success. It proved the feasibility of deployable dry fuel designs for thermonuclear weapons. However, the tests also altered public perception of nuclear weapons once they became aware of the long-term side effects of fallout. Operation Castle and the subsequent fallout played a big role in the passage of the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963. The law prohibited all test detonations of nuclear weapons except for any that took place underground. 
It would take until 1996 with the passage of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty for underground testing to be banned as well. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to click the link on screen to check out our video about five nuclear tests that went horribly wrong. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.